All right, so today we're going to discuss a pretty important example um, when you're just starting out learning these examples for transport phenomena, and that is the situation where you have what is called equimolar counter diffusion. All right, so the, the big point is that it allows us to introduce a new definition that's pretty important. So the way we've been thinking about the total flux of species A, or what we've been calling the convective flux of species A, is that it's the combination of the diffusive flux of A as well as the advective flux of A. Again, the diffusive flux is associated with random uh, motion of particles, and the advective flux is associated with the bulk movement of particles. Another way you could express the total flux of something, or the convective flux, is the concentration of that species times its particular velocity. Now, note that it looks similar to this, but it's, it's actually quite different. So these are two definitions for the total flux of a species. Uh, they are both valid, and we're going to want to be able to choose, basically, um, how we want to incorporate this one into the previous one. So let's look a little bit about how we get here, because it is a little bit confusing. So first of all, the way we define molar average velocity is you take the velocity of each of the species and you multiply them by their respective um, mole fractions. So it's basically a, averaged, a velocity averaged by, well, the mole fractions of each of the species that are present in the system. If we assume that we have a binary system, which means we just have two species in our system, let's call them A and B, then that expression would simply just look like this. Okay, so the way we write this in concentration is we take those mole fractions and we convert them into concentrations, because again, YA is simply going to be CA over C, so I've simply just transcribed those in here in this line here. Now that both of these are divided by C, we could algebraically represent it like this. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to combine or incorporate this molar average velocity expression into our standard definition for, I guess, the total flux of a species in the system. So again, we've changed our definition slightly, um, but it's equivalent from the mole fractions times the velocity of each species to the mole, well, the concentration of each species times the velocity over the total concentration. And that's what we're going to be subbing into this expression right here. So now, doing that, what we're going to get is this right here. So again, kept CA just the same, but over here, with that molar average velocity, we're substituting this new expression in there. Again, let's assume that it's a binary system just to make it simpler to look at. And we have this now. Okay, well this is interesting because if you look at our second definition over here, the total flux is just going to be equal to the concentration of the species times the flow of these species. We can now substitute that into the first expression that we had. What that allows us to do is, well, you'll see in a second. The first thing we want to do is we want to say, okay, we have a CA over here and a C. So again, what we could do is say that's just going to be the mole fraction of species A. So now we've gotten rid of these concentration terms out here. And now whatever's left is simply the definition that we have for the total flux as well. So now, paradoxically, we're expressing the total flux of A as a function of the total flux of species A, which is the, the sort of weird part but you'll see that it has utility when we start doing problems uh, in just a little bit. So again, this is our conventional definition. This is what we were working with in the previous two lectures. Um, this is the one you see in the diffusion convection equation. But now we see that, okay, if we use that second definition of the total flux, we have an equivalent expression like this. So both of these two definitions are valid. Again, note that I went back to generalizing this. This is the total flux, which is the sum of each of the individual fluxes. So Na plus Nb just equals N. And again, it's a little weird having Na technically on both sides of the equation, but you'll see the utility of that briefly. And the point of why we care about obtaining this expression is that um, when you're solving certain problems in transport phenomena, like the one we're going to do today, equimolar counter diffusion, 
uh, you want to choose the definition that is going to help you simplify the problem the most. And for today, this will come in handy very, very early on. So let's look at a situation where we need to use that. So suppose you have a system that looks like this. This is the system that we're looking at. We're considering equimolar counter diffusion, sometimes known as EMCD. So we have species A over here and we have species B over here. The first thing to note is that the system is a closed system. So what that means is that the total flux must be zero. Okay, why must that be the case? Because again, nothing that is in the surroundings of the system is able to move into the system and nothing that is in the system is able to move out of the system. This is like a glass apparatus. So there's no um, permeability. There's no movement of any of these red molecules to the outside. That doesn't happen. And there's no movement of any of these green molecules um, to the outside. And if you have, say, molecules hanging out outside of the apparatus like this, none of these blue molecules are going to be able to get into the apparatus. So because it's a closed system, that is what is allowing us to say that the total flux must be zero. Okay, well then you should already be seeing where this utility is going to come in. Um, the total flux, again, is going to be the sum of the individual fluxes that we have in the system. And in this case, we have two species within this glass apparatus that is going to be the flux of A as well as the flux of B. Uh, because Again, this n equals zero, what we're really seeing here is that uh, the flux of A is going to be the opposite of the flux of B. And this is what we mean by equimolar counter diffusion. You have A moving in one direction and B moving in the other direction, and they're doing so in an equimolar way. Okay, so remember the problem that we're always going to ask is what is the concentration profile for the system what is the mass transfer for the system so for now we're going to start here uh, remember that this already has a lot of assumptions in there that we talked about last time in the diffusion convection equation of the thin film diffusion we've already assumed that it's going to be um, steady state we've already assumed no reaction at this point, we've already assumed it's one dimensional. We've assumed it's rectilinear um, geometry as well. All those assumptions allow us to just say, okay, we're gonna start the problem here and model it this way. Now again, it's a binary system. So that means that we could express this n here as the sum of these two n's, okay? And again, remember it's equimolar counter diffusion. That's another assumption that we're making. So we're saying NA equals NB, well, negative NB. So what we get is a cancellation uh, right there. And now you should be like, okay, I see where this is going. Because now we have, once again, that the total flux equals the diffusive flux, and that there's no advection going on in the system. What that means is that this is going to be the exact same solution as we had with the thin film in the first lecture. Remember, because we used was all these same assumptions and we got to this result and then the derivation from that point on is exactly identical. So what we get is this linear type concentration profile where it starts at CA0 and decreases like this. So it's the mx plus b form right here. Um, note there's actually something a little important. There is another way you could arrive at this concentration profile. So side note here, this might come up later. If you say that your concentration in terms of A is incredibly dilute, that means that there's not a lot of A within your system. Then what you're saying is that the mole fraction of A is incredibly small. And because the mole fraction of A is incredibly small, the contribution to the system from the adjective term is incredibly small as well. So what you're saying is most of the convection that occurs within the system will be as a result from diffusion.
So what that says is that, okay, y is much smaller than j, so you can neglect this entire term over here, and you'll get the same exact statement here that the total flux of the system is pretty much going to be only due to diffusion. So technically, I guess what we should include here is those squiggly lines to be about equal. So total flux is approximately just the diffusive flux. And remember, the beauty of this is that um, in terms of this equimolar counter diffusion thing, we could have made the exact same argument in terms of B, right? So all the assumptions that we made for A are equally valid for B. So what we get is an equivalent concentration profile in terms of B. They're both going to be linear concentration profiles. The only difference is that um, it's going to be like this. So on this side, you have a high concentration of A, and it's going to drop as you traverse this system. So if we call this Z equals 0, and we call this end Z equals L, what you're going to find is that the concentration of the, the red material, A, is going to be high at this end and low at this end, but it's going to drop um, linearly. And similarly, because the same assumptions worked for B, you're also going to get a linear concentration profile, and it's going to start relatively high over here, and it's going to drop to some lower value as you travel um, leftward along the system. So again, key point, solving the problem from B's perspective will result in a similar concentration profile as with A. So the takeaway, remember this new definition that we have for the total flux of species. Remember um, that when you're starting a problem, you could choose between using this definition and this definition. And equimolar counter diffusion allows us to exploit that definition and get back to the thin film diffusion example and solve this problem. That